Hey man, which one's this? Oh, hey man, uh, this is the one where he makes a turn-based game, like Pokemon. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, you know, I actually recreated the project from the video so I could play around with the code and add some mechanics. Oh, no way, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually rewatching the video now because I'm kind of having some trouble with it. Oh yeah? Do you need a second pair of eyes? I'd be happy to take a look at it for you. Really? Oh man, that would be awesome. Here, let me pull it up. All right, so just to refresh your memory, this is very simple turn-based combat. So I go and then my opponent goes. In this case, uh, it looks like we're gonna fight Brachys here. Um, and you can see we've got two actions. I can he heal and then I can also attack. So I'll go ahead and hit attack. You can see that I do some damage. When Brachys comes up, he does way more damage than I do because I'm only level 16. But I can go ahead and drop a heal on there. And then of course, after a couple of turns, eventually I'm gonna get my butt kicked. But you kind of get the idea. Now, I wanted to expand on this game by actually adding pause functionality. Um, so if we switch to the code, I can kind of walk you through the steps that I took to get there. So over in Rider, we can see kind of how this is structured here. Uh, there's a battle state enum, and that kind of helps me control the flow of combat. Combat begins and there's a beginning phase. We've got the player turn and enemy turn states. And then, of course, uh, depending on if I win or lose, we switch to that state and then react to that using some if statements. So, of course, I wanted to add my own new state called pause. Um, and then if we scroll down, we can see all the functions that make up this class. But two that we want to focus on now are the on attack button and then the on heal button. And uh, as you can see, these are going to be wired up to the buttons in Unity Editor. And basically, they just make a state check just to make sure that it's currently the player's turn. And then each one calls their respective function call. So this one calls player heal. And then the on attack button is going to call player attack. So in that sort of same vein, I decided I'd make my own on pause button. Right. And then, of course, I would call the pause game function, which we'll go ahead and create. And then I decided I would probably have to have a on resume button as well, which of course is going to resume the game. And so scrolling up to the states again, um, really the only time I want to allow the player to pause the game is when the battle is actually occurring. So during the player turn and then the enemy turn. When the game is beginning or if it's won or lost, I don't want to allow the player to pause because there's really nothing to pause. So if we scroll back down to the on pause button, I went ahead and I put a conditional just to check against that. If it's the beginning state or if it's the lost state or if it's the one state, then I'll just go ahead and return. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and allow the player to pause the game. Oh, and of course, logically, you don't want to be able to pause if the game is already paused. So I just decided to separate that out into its own guard clause in hopes that it would read a little bit easier. And likewise, for the on resume button, I just wanted to make sure that the state is actually paused. Um, and if it's not, then I go ahead and I just return out of this function as well. So now that I've got this logic in place, uh, right before the game gets paused, I can go ahead and set the state to pause. And then I have to do the same thing for the on resume button. But here's where I ran into my first bit of trouble. I realized that I needed to store the previous state because when I resume the game, I want to make sure I resume to the correct state. If it's the enemy's turn when I pause, I want to make sure I switch back to the enemy's turn. Um, so to do that, I had to add another reference to battle state, which I have up here called previous state. So then I go ahead and just set that as well. And of course I have to call that first. So then when the resume button is clicked, now I can actually set the state to the previous state. And that ends up working well. But now I wanna add a new state. I wanna let the player change their fighter in the middle of combat, but only on their turn. So I was thinking about how I would work that new state into the code and I was getting kind of lost. It was, it was hard to keep track of it all in my head. And I even thought about drawing up a diagram, but I don't know, it seems like the more states I add, the more convoluted the code gets. 
And I know there's probably a whole bunch of other things that I haven't even considered yet. And honestly, I'm just afraid it's gonna turn into a big pile of spaghetti code. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I think I have an idea. Sweet, I'm totally open to suggestions. That's good, because we're gonna refactor the entire thing. Oh man, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not gonna be that bad. We're just gonna refactor the battle system class so it acts more like a state machine. Oh yeah, state machines. Uh, I've played around with those before, but I think you're gonna have to refresh my memory. Of course, man, I've got you. We'll be using the state pattern, which is a behavioral design pattern that allows an object to alter its behavior when its internal state changes. Now, your battle system is already doing this by using the battle state enum and a bunch of if statements. But with the state pattern, we'll actually make each battle state its own class. That way, we can change the battle system's behavior by simply changing which state it's currently referencing. Hey, that sounds great to me, but uh, do you mind taking the wheel? Yeah, of course. The first thing we need to do is create a new class to represent your game's states. Let's call it state. This class is going to encapsulate each state's behavior. So we're gonna to need to add some methods to represent these behaviors. For this particular game, we know that those are going to be attack, heal, pause, and resume. And on top of that, from looking at your code, I know we're going to need a start method that's gonna represent the behavior that we kick off when a state is first activated. So now we can go back to the battle system and add a reference to the current state that the battle system will keep track of. So it can actually delegate behavior to whatever the current state is. To do that, we can scroll on down to the pause button here. And now instead of calling this pause game method, what we can do is call the current states pause method. And then of course, the same thing applies for resume game, attack, and heal which also means we no longer need to control the flow with these if statements. Now, the behavior will be based on the implementation of the class that the current state is pointing to whenever each one of these methods is called, which means we're going to need to migrate these different behaviors, such as this begin method, to classes that will implement these behaviors. Okay, all right, this is making some sense, but I'm curious, how do we change the state now? What we're going to do now is move that responsibility to the states themselves. And in order to do that, we're going to need to expose a new public method called setState that accepts a reference to the next state, which we will use to set the current state. And then, like I mentioned before, we're going to want to call that state's start method in case it has any sort of initialization behavior. All right, so that's good, but we're still missing one piece in order for states to call this set state function, they're gonna need a reference to the battle system. So what we can do is go back to our state class and then create a constructor that accepts a battle system. That of course we're gonna to wanna to store in a field, like so. All right, looking good. The only thing left to do now is to start implementing our own states. But before we do that, we're gonna to need to make an adjustment to this class Let's go ahead and make this abstract, make the battle system field protected so that driving classes can access it. And then we're gonna make each one of these methods virtual. Now we're ready to finally implement our first state. So why don't we start with the begin state, which if we go back to the battle system class, we can see here in this setup battle method that with our old code, that the begin battle state is associated with this begin method. And all it does is it sets the dialogue text on the HUD, waits for two seconds, and then changes to the player turn state. So what we can do is grab these two lines, copy them, and then what we're gonna do is create a new class, call it begin state, have it derive from the state class that we just created, override the start function, and then paste our code into this. Now, of course, we don't have access to the HUD, so we're gonna have to call the system.hud property. And the same thing applies for this enemy unit. We'll call system.enemyUnit. The next thing we'll need to do is actually create a new state. We're gonna call this player turn state. 
and then call system.setState and then instantiate a new player turn state, passing in, of course, the system. And just to be clean and tidy, I'm going to move this to its own class file. Much better. All right, going back to the battle system class, if we take a look at this setup battle method again. Now, instead of doing all this, all we have to do is call set state and pass in an instance of a new begin state, again, passing in the system. And now we've completely migrated this behavior out of the battle system class, and we can go ahead and get rid of it. Now, all you have to do is rinse and repeat. Implement each one of these battle states as its own state class, and one by one, migrate all the behavior out of your battle system class. This is perfect. Now I can add a whole bunch of states without worrying about my code turning into a big plate of spaghetti. Oh yeah, and it's way more scalable too. Definitely. I'll have to start thinking of some new mechanics to add now. I can't wait to see it. Anyway, I better get back to work. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Thanks again for your help. Watch part two for the full implementation or download the completed project using the link in the description. Also, special shout out to Berquist 3 d Brecht, Dark Rush Photography, NZ, Thomas, and Trond.